Now, I know I literally just made a video on the Urgantuan Leviathan, a return of the Ancients mod, but recently there's been a new update to the mod, so of course I'm going to be checking out all the new additions in this video. So let's begin by checking out the improved animation where the Urgantuan Leviathan eats the Sunbeam. Now, as I said in my previous video on this mod, I believe they have added a splash, and I believe there are also a few other minor additions to the animation. So let me just really quickly show you the animation, and then I'm going to talk about everything that I noticed that's been changed. Aurora, we see you. Man, whatever hit you guys really messed up your ship. Uh, Captain? You're gonna wanna take a look at this. Is that a building down there? It appears so, but I can't identify it. What do you mean you can't identify it? Doesn't it doesn't come up on the system. Look, it's not important right now. Boys, brace yourselves. We're breaching atmosphere in 10, 9, 8... Wait, what's that? What? No, that energy spike. It's getting larger. From the building? Everyone get to the escape pods now. I don't think I'll be able to steer clear of it. Mayday, mayday. Thrusters have taken heavy damage. Bracing for impact. What the hell? Alright, so the biggest difference you might have noticed in that animation is the massive splash that occurs when the Archangel Leviathan first jumps out of the water, and then of course when it lands back in the water. Now, I think this is absolutely essential for the animation, and of course a lot of you guys have been asking for this, so I'm super glad it's finally been added, and I definitely think it adds a whole lot to the animation as a whole. It definitely makes it a lot more realistic. The next thing I notice is that when it fades into the new blue background at the start of the animation, and when it fades out of the blue background at the end of the animation, it happens a lot more subtly. Like, you don't notice it as much, which I definitely think is an improvement. Now, for those of you who don't know, the blue background you see in this animation is basically essential for this animation to actually work and actually look realistic, and I think that it fading into it a lot more subtly is definitely necessary for it to seem a little bit more realistic. I also noticed that the Gargantuan Leviathan seems to move a little differently. Like, after it's jumped out of the water and already landed back in the water, like, the tail end of its body seems to move a little bit differently than it has in the past. It's not a huge change, obviously, but it's just something I noticed. I'm not sure if I'm the only one who noticed that. And then the last thing I noticed is that the audio sounds a little different. It definitely sounds more like it's coming from an actual radio, and I definitely think that this is necessary for it to actually sound realistic. This is also something I think a lot of you guys have asked for. So once again, I'm definitely glad it's been added, and I definitely like this new animation a lot better than the old animation. I think it's an awesome improvement. And now we can actually see the next main addition to this mod swimming around right over here, and that is of course the Alpha Peeper. Ooh, yeah, that's its sound, and of course it sounds amazing. Man, look at this little guy, he looks awesome. I really, really like this shade of green. I think it looks amazing, actually. There's another one of its sounds. So as you can see, the Alpha Peeper has finally been added to Subnautica, and it comes in four different variants. As you also saw, there are new sounds and everything, and of course there's animations for it swimming around. Now let me go ahead and spawn in all four of these variants. I believe there are four variants because they haven't decided which one they're going to choose, or maybe they just want to have four variants of the creature in the game. I'm not entirely sure, but there we go. Here is the first variant. This one seems to be more rainbow. It also seems to have a pink eye. This one honestly looks amazing too. Two. I still think I like the green one more just because it's green. Oh, that's a new sound. That's one we haven't heard before. But as I was saying, I definitely kind of like this green one more just because of the shade of green. Let's go ahead and spawn in the next variant. There we go. The next variant is actually the green one. So let's move on to the next one. Oh, wow. This one's actually super cool. I love this shade of purple too. Man, I'm actually kind of torn between this one and the green one because purple is also one of my very favorite colors. Man, this one looks amazing. 
And I love these sounds. They're actually so cool. What the heck? Like, they actually fit into the game so well with these sounds. Okay, let's go ahead and spawn in the fourth variant really quickly. Okay, and here we go. This one's also purpley, but it looks a little bit different than the last one. It has more of a blue eye this time. Man, dude, these things look amazing. I'm honestly super happy with these variants. And I honestly don't know which one to choose. I still think I'm kind of torn between this green one and the purple one. They both look amazing. Honestly, all of them look amazing. So I have no idea how the devs of this mod are going to decide which one they're going to keep in the game. Now, you can pick these guys up and you can actually hold them. As you can see, there is like a question mark placeholder here. But yeah, we can hold them in our hand like this and everything. We can also release them and everything, just like a normal fish. Unfortunately, we can't really scan them. As you can see, the option to scan it came up, but like we can't scan it for some reason, which is a little weird. I assume they're going to add the ability to scan it a little bit later. But yeah, that's basically everything with the Alpha Peeper. I'm super happy with these guys. All right, so for the next edition, we're in the dunes, and that's because we're going to be checking out the adult gargantuan leviathan over in the void, because he's been changed just a little bit. More specifically, his shockwave attack has been greatly improved, so we're going to be checking that out really quickly. All right, here we go. We can hear the garg already, and... There he is. So I'm just going to kind of wait around here until he does his shockwave attack, and then we'll see how it's been changed. Oh. And there it is. Okay, so I'm noticing a couple of improvements there compared to the old shockwave attack. First of all, like actually shatters your visor this time around, which is actually super cool. Oh, hello, bud. Where are you? Oh my gosh, that scared me. So yeah, I definitely think that's awesome. It also like seems to sound a lot better, like compared to the old sound. I think they definitely tweaked it because it sounds very different and very much better. And then from what I understand, the shockwave attack also like pushes you back. And if you were in like a cyclops, it would also like push your sub back. Now, besides the shockwave attack, the Argentuan Leviathan behavior has also been tweaked a little bit. It apparently has better terrain and hitbox avoidance, and then apparently um, its behavior and animations have also been tweaked a little bit, so there's also that besides just the shockwave attack. Now, besides all the changes to the adult Gargantuan Leviathan, I also noticed that the juvenile Gargantuan Leviathan has also been changed just a little bit. As you can see on its, like, belly here, it seems to look a little bit different. I'm not exactly sure what that is, but it's definitely been changed, and I honestly kind of like how that pattern looks. It looks pretty cool. Now, right next to this juvenile Gargantuan Leviathan, as I was looking around for changes, I also noticed that there's the skull right here of a ghost Leviathan. Now, you may remember this from the Halloween update, and I figured the devs might have placed a couple of these around the crater but this is my first time actually finding one so yeah and i'm assuming it's been eaten by the juvenile gargantuan leviathan and then its remains lie right here now the baby gargantuan leviathan also appears to have the same changes to its model as the juvenile gargantuan leviathan does and from what i understand there's also a few new animations for when you play with the gargantuan leviathan baby so let's also check those out really quickly all right come here man let me play with you why are you running away okay <laughs> I think that's the same one that we've already seen in the past. I think we've also seen that one. Oh. Oh, he's doing the circle thing around me. We've also seen that in the past, though. I still think it's really cool, though. Oh, I think that's a new one, actually. There we go. That one's cool. Whoa. What the heck? That's a new one. Um, Did he just, like grab me in his mouth there and then he like looked at me like in a joking manner or something like that what the heck that one was kind of cool let's see if we can get him to do that one again oh yeah we've also seen that in the past but that's pretty cool well i think that one's a little bit new he didn't like try and eat me this time but he did the thing that he did at the end oh and i'm in the ground okay i still want to get that thing where he like grabbed me in his mouth let's see if i can still get it i think it's pretty rare because it's been taking a while to get it again oh what the heck he just did it again um whoa okay that was that was weird all right i noticed that both times it happened it was right when he was like eating a fish which is really weird so i'm not sure what's up with that but it definitely seemed to like grab me in his mouth and then he did an animation so yeah i think that's everything new with the baby gargantuan leviathan 
So next up, I want to talk about this new resource that has been added to the game. Now this is called Red Barrel, and when we pick it up, it says, Very rare mineral with applications in advanced alien fabrication. Now the really interesting thing about this is that this is the same stuff that we find in Subnautica Below Zero in the Fabricator Caverns. As you can see, it basically looks exactly the same, and this resource is basically just an easter egg from Subnautica Below Zero at this point, so I think it's a really cool and smart addition to the game. It honestly makes a lot of sense. So with that out of the way, I want to check out everything new that's been added with the Alien Fabricator. So the first thing I noticed is that we have two new types of tablets. I'm pretty sure these are new. We have the white tablet and the red tablet. If I already mentioned it in a previous video, whatever, now I've told you twice. I also wanted to quickly build the handheld warping device because there's something I noticed new about it that I don't think I mentioned in a previous video. The handheld warping device enables both short and long range teleportation. Be cautious of the various side effects of teleportation, including sudden death and failure of proper materialization. So I think that's also new. So the thing that I didn't notice is that when we're just holding this in the personal teleportation mode and we right click, we get teleported forward. And if we hold the right click, it'll basically charge it up and then we'll teleport even farther, which is pretty cool. And it also seemed to spawn a stalker there for some reason. So yeah, this thing is going to be super useful in an actual playthrough because wow, that just teleported us a pretty long distance. Also, if you're wondering, it doesn't break the game by teleporting you through the ground. They thought of that, don't worry about it. Now, there haven't really been any major changes to the alien builder tool from what I understand, but I wanted to go ahead and build this little base in the cove tree because that's where I always build my bases, just to kind of demonstrate what you can do with the alien builder tool because it's pretty darn cool. Now, in here, we have a pretty massive space just full of tons of alien equipment, and I didn't really fill it up all the way either. There's still a ton of space that I could fill up, but yeah, this is pretty much just a massive custom alien base that I was just kind of able to build. It didn't even take all that long, and this just basically goes to show what you can do with the alien builder tool because there's seriously so much potential for this thing. I honestly can't wait to see some of the stuff that people build when this mod is released to the public. Now, the final thing that has been added in this update is the Cyclops Scanner Module and MK2. So basically, this is just an alien modification to the Cyclops Scanner Module MK1, and it says an industrial scale vehicle mounted device integrated with advanced alien scanning technology with gargantuan power and efficiency. I see what they did there. Accessed via vehicle camera system. So let's go ahead and craft this thing and check it out. All right, let's go ahead and put this in really quickly and let's see what it does. Okay, let's power up the engine. And it looks like there's like a green gear right here under the camera systems. Okay, and it says press and hold F to activate the Cyclops scanning device. Oh, and there, oh, it's a little buggy. And there we go. What is running into my Cyclops? I have no idea, but it scanned the gasopod. And honestly, I like how it looks a lot. It looks pretty cool. It sends out like an architect beam pretty much, and then it scans whatever you're pointing it at. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's going to be super useful for scanning the Argantuan Leviathan once you're playing this in survival. It's probably going to be essential unless you want to die. But yeah, I think that's everything that's been added in this update. Let me know what you think about all these new changes, if you like them, if you have any suggestions. I'm sure the mod developers will be happy to hear from you, so feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It's free and it helps you a ton. Huge thanks to my patrons over at Patreon, Baby Yoda, Fake Frames, Moo Lord, Sean, Skeptic, and Tangy. If you want to be awesome, become a patron and support today, and I will see you guys in the next video.